Hello, I'm Robbie Robertson from Sidera Technologies. And on behalf of myself and my co-authors, thank you for coming to see our presentation on an online knowledge base to improve small satellite reliability for the CubeSat Developers Workshop 2020. Uh, we are very sad to hear that the workshop was canceled for this year due to the coronavirus, uh, but uh, very happy that the conference organizers are giving us this opportunity to share our work. So this is what we're going to be talking about, the SSRI knowledge base. Uh, this will be a website to provide high quality resources on topics that drive small set mission confidence. So first, uh, we'll start by introducing the organizations involved in this effort. Uh, then we'll describe our motivation for choosing the knowledge base as our first product uh, from the Small Satellite Reliability Initiative. And then we'll describe the knowledge base itself its structure and its capabilities. Uh, finally, we'll go over the results of a survey that many of you may have received and that we're using to guide the development of the knowledge base. So these are the two key organizations involved in the development of the SSRI knowledge base. Uh, one is the SSRI itself, the Small Satellite Reliability Initiative. And the second is the Small Spacecraft Virtual Institute, or S3VI. So the SSRI is an activity that was kicked off in 2017 uh, with broad participation from NASA, other government agencies, academia, and commercial space systems providers, a subset of which you can see on the right. The SSRI mission is to share information with the small SAT community. So developers, users, and other stakeholders uh, that serves to improve mission confidence while maintaining the efficiencies of small set missions. Uh, the S3VI is a very uh, complementary and, and closely related uh, effort. Uh, it's an institute physically located at NASA Ames Research Center and uh, also founded in 2017. Uh, S3VI is using its web portal to provide access to various tools, databases, and other resources uh, to advance the field of small spacecraft systems. Uh, so these two groups are collaborating uh, to develop the SSRI knowledge base. So uh, now you know our mission, but what problem are we aiming to solve? So let's start by looking at the numbers here from one of my co-authors, Michael Swartout's website, uh, tracking CubeSat mission outcomes. So of the 79% that uh, Mike has data on uh, since 2000, 28% uh, of CubeSat missions were either dead on arrival or uh, lost early in the mission. So we believe that this is an unacceptable failure rate, uh, which is representative of you know, not just CubeSats, but small sat missions in general. And we believe that it's significantly driven by one, that small sat team members and other stakeholders lack standard processes and institutional knowledge that should guide the design and development of a, uh, a successful small sat mission uh, that maintains the advantages of, uh, of, of the small sat paradigm um, while you know, reaching mission success. Uh, and two, there is no quality public forum where this diverse and disparate set of individuals and organizations that are developing small sats can access and share best practices and quality vetted resources uh, on, on process and, and mission design and every other element uh, that gets a uh, small set uh, to end of mission. Uh, so we've identified the problem, uh, but how are we going to address it? So first of all, we want to avoid prescriptive solutions. Uh, think mission classes with prescriptive, uh, rigid process requirements within each class. Uh, these would be too restrictive and in many cases would prevent uh, the small set teams from leveraging off the shelf commercial technologies or from designing for nuanced uh, and diverse risk postures. Second, we wanna target a wide audience. So targeting a wide audience will maximize our impact and it will also maximize the size of our user base. Uh, and since we plan on designing something that needs contributions and feedback from the users, 
uh, to kind of grow and, and develop, uh, we want to maximize uh, you know, how many of them we have. Finally, we want to follow lean engineering processes. So this means following the product development flow that is shown in this top row. So we want to start with the skateboard, uh, the minimum viable product. We want to get something out uh, into users' hands as, as quickly as we can so that we can get results and feedback that uh, informs the further development of, uh, of our products, of the tools that we offer you know, for free to the small SAT community. Uh, this is uh, as opposed to assuming what the final product looks like and, and working to get there straight away, which will take more time and resources and assumes that we know uh, what that best product is right now, uh, which, which we don't. So this is the approach that we're taking to uh, the development of the knowledge base. So this is the solution uh, that we arrived at for the problem that we identified. It's the SSRI knowledge base website that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. Uh, so this website will live on the S3VI web portal and it's composed of two uh, primary elements. Uh, the resource library, which is outlined on the right here, and the mission confidence framework that's outlined on the left here. So the resource library contains the content, the fundamental basic content for this knowledge base. Each resource in the library can be pretty much anything. So an article, a website, a software tool, a book, a standard, um, or an original SSRI white paper, uh, anything that uh, can be helpful to a small set developer or stakeholder. Uh, the resource library will be searchable, but the primary way that we plan for users are planning for users to access the resources is through the mission confidence framework, which is going to provide order and structure for the content. It's going to be a, uh, a graphical table of contents that the users will be able to navigate, find the topic page for uh, the task that they're working on. And on that topic page, there will be information to contextualize and maximize the value of the resources contained within that topic. Uh, and also uh, interfaces for users to get their questions answered or to provide content to that page to recommend resources or provide feedback, best practices, lessons learned that can then be integrated into the mission confidence framework topic pages. So we plan for a resource to look something like this. Uh, a resource will have a title. It'll have some original content that we're going to provide along with the resource. And then it will have the resource itself or some way of uh, some guidance for users to find that resource. Um, when possible, uh, the, uh, the, this is going to actually be a download, a PDF download uh, of the resource. Um, for other resources, like for example, a software tool, it might be a link to a website. In that case, uh, the software company's website, so the user can go and try out or, uh, or purchase that software tool. Um, and, uh, and in the case of a book uh, that's only available for purchase, it could be just reference information that the user can, can use to go, to go find that book uh, you know, within their own libraries if possible or for, for purchase. And then the original content will include, at the very least, a description in the context of small set mission confidence. And when possible, will include uh, best practices and lessons learned regarding the application of this resource to small set missions. Uh, and our hope is that input from the user community will, uh, will be a, a really key part of developing uh, these best practices and lessons learned that are uh, incorporated into uh, resource content. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, the mission confidence framework is the main way that we, we would like users to be uh, finding their, the resources and the information that they're looking for in the knowledge base. The mission confidence framework, again, will live on the knowledge base homepage. Um, it will be you know, effectively uh, an outline, somewhat like this one shown here, uh, where uh, you know 
where you have uh, you know sections and subsections with which then uh, eventually uh, uh, bring you to a topic page. Um, unlike uh, this uh, outline shown here, the uh, the mission confidence framework is going to be a very engaging, interactive, uh, graphical table of contents uh, that will allow the user to quickly navigate to the topic page that they're looking for. Uh, and that topic page will have a title, it'll have a description and scope, also uh, lessons learned and best practices, and most importantly, a listing of the relevant resources for that user to then uh, access and, and use uh, to really uh, get into the detailed um, uh, uh, responses to their questions. And these resources are going to be listed, uh, you know, maybe something like what's shown here on the right, where each resource has a rating uh, associated with it, and users are going to be rating these resources to determine how they're sorted here. Um, there's also going to be an interface on, uh, interface on each topic page for user comments and Q&A. Uh, that is where users will be able to, to provide uh, lessons learned in best practices or to recommend resources that we add to that topic. Um, and then uh, site administrators will receive an email and they can integrate um, maybe responses to a user question or user uh, uh, feedback recommendations into the topic page content. In order to finalize a few key elements of the SSRI knowledge base website design, uh, we sent an email to hundreds of SmallSat team members and stakeholders uh, recognizing that the feedback from the target user base is important to uh, creating something really valuable to the community. Uh, and we were happy to have a diverse group of 66 respondents. Uh, so you can see the diversity of this group of respondents uh, in the chart on the left. Uh, so we're really happy about that. And we are also uh, happy with and appreciative of all of the, uh, the feedback from the user base. Uh, in particular, these two points here, 40% um, of the respondents recommended public resources to include, and 40% offered to contribute resources from their organization. Uh, it, was, it was just very encouraging to see that future users have already uh, contributed content effectively to the site um, uh, before it's even gone live. 70% uh, of the respondents uh, prefer a user comment interface on each topic page instead of a centralized forum for discussing topics, uh, which uh, matched our baseline plan. And 53% of respondents preferred a mission phase and task-based structure for that uh, graphical table of contents for the site, the mission confidence framework. Um, and it was it was good. We had a few options going for that structure, so it was good to see a clear winner there. There's also strong support for resource search capability and resource rating features. So we made sure to integrate those into the uh, the final design for the website. So in summary, uh, too many small sets fail, and we believe that these failures are driven significantly by a lack of institutional knowledge that we can address using a public platform for knowledge sharing. Uh, and by leveraging user input and existing resources, we can develop an online knowledge base quickly and efficiently. And finally, user-based survey results have shaped the development of this SSRI knowledge base and shown really great support for its development. Uh, again, thank you very much for taking the time to watch our presentation on uh, the development of the SSRI knowledge base. And please keep an eye out for our planned release date, which is July of this year, uh, 2020. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, resource suggestions, or uh, would like to contribute in any other way to the development of the SSRI knowledge base, please email me at robbie.robertson at sideratech.com. Uh, and finally, I wanted to provide a few useful links related to the uh, work that we're doing. Uh, first, the S3VI homepage, uh, where, as I mentioned, you can access uh, some interesting resources and tools around small spacecraft technology, uh, including the S3VI Federated Small Site Information Search, which I've also included a link for, 
uh, you can go here and, uh, and, and search simultaneously through multiple databases, uh, including, for example, a uh, database of uh, all uh, past small sat conference papers um, and uh, radiation databases from uh, multiple organizations uh, to find part level uh, radiation test data. Uh, I've also included a link to the SSRI homepage where you can learn more about the initiative, how to get involved, uh, who's involved, and uh, see some reports from previous technical interchange meetings. Uh, and finally, the CubeSat database. So uh, that's Michael uh, Swartout's website that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, please check that out. Really interesting information, interesting graphs and tables. And, uh, and if you are a small sat developer or have been in the past and haven't filled out uh, his survey, which you can find on that site, um, please do so so that uh, you know, he can um, really uh, maintain and, 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 and keep a, uh, a really quality resource there. Uh, so thank you again for your time and I hope everyone is staying healthy.